The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648, internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, the author of Mastering Probability, Steve Rhodes. Good morning from TFNN. Welcome to the October 30th, terrific Thursday. Of course, October 30th, I don't know about in your neck of the woods, but in Detroit, we used to call that Devil's Night. Hey, this is the October 30th. This is the terrific Thursday edition of today's opening bell on the Trader's Edge. Thanks so much for joining me, folks. I'm your host, Steve Perseverance Rhodes. And I believe we should be pioneers of our future and never be prisoners of our past. So let's make sure that you and I, that we do everything we can to pioneer our day. And let's always remember that our greatest success is not in never falling. But it always rising to the occasion, always being able to get up each and every time we fall out there. Let's go check these markets out there falling just a scooch, scotch as we speak right now. Hey, you can give us a call, and I would absolutely love to hear from you. So 877-927-6648. That's our number internationally, of course, 727-445-1044. Then together, you and I, we can go hunting for bulls, bears, take a look at the stock charts, try to figure out what your market is doing whatever it is that you're trading it is terrific thursday this is of course tiger financial news network i'm steve rhodes and welcome to the show right now we've got dow futures they're trading down about uh, 22 points so they're off their session lows we got to go figure out what's going on in the futures market out here s&p off three and three quarters points out here trade at 1968.75 nasdaq off 10 points trade out at 4062 russell 2000 off a few points as well. King dollar up 18 pennies, 180 ticks, trading out at 86.21. The euro back a bit. Uh, we'll take a look at the currency pairs. We'll take a look at Goldilocks and high ho silver out here. Gold down 20 bucks right now. She's trading out at 12.04. Silver off 61 cents, down 3.5%, trading at 16.65. Light sweet crude back 62 pennies right now, trading out at 81.58. And you know what we need to look at? Natural gas. You know, the seasonal pattern inside natural gas, that's up 1% this morning we need to go see if there's any a to b equals cd patterns that are being made out there and i want to say personally a great thank you to all of those that uh, attended and to all of those that are watching the archive version of last night's workshop that i did for e-signal attendance total tenant signups for it about uh, 700 people out there so i really it was a great uh, you know standing room only unless you were sitting down in your chair out there so it was a uh, fun workshop fun for me to do I do appreciate you uh, investing your time with me for an hour out there. hope that you got a lot out of that uh, workshop. So we'll take a look at some A to B equals CD patterns as well. As we take a quick peek across the globe out here, let's go see what's going on over in Europe right now. The DAX off 81 points, about 8 tenths of a percent. FTSE down 35 points, a half a percent in Asia last night. You had the Nikkei up 104, about 7 tenths of a percent. The Hang Seng off a half a percent, down 117. Not really a big deal out there. The Shanghai up 19. It closed out at 2503. Okay, so I got all kinds of requests out here to take a look at uh, gold, gold stocks, the uh, ETFs out there. And those are coming from our requests inside our Tiger's Den. Folks, if you're new to TFNN.com, we've got an extraordinary uh, trading room chat room really it's a trading room what it really is it's a peer group and whenever you're trying to take your game from level a to level b to level c and so forth what you always want to do is you want to surround yourself with it. the whole key is uh, is always elevating yourself to a to a higher level peer group you know it's all about proximity is power if you could remember three words today proximity is power that means you need to move closer to where it is that you can get the most. If you want to learn how to play golf, or you want to get better at the game of golf, go play with somebody that's better than you, not worse than you. You know that. Same thing in trading. So come on over to the homepage at TFN.com. You can check out the Tiger's Den for 30 days out there, and you'll be joined with a, a group of extraordinary human beings, the type of peer group that I 
like to be associated with, and you should too. Now, let's go take a look at for all these folks here in the den. So let's see. Starting from the bottom on up, it said, uh, my thoughts, Steve, my thoughts on AEM. So let's go take a look at uh, AEM. Let me just switch over to uh, this page right here. Let's do this. So there's the nugget. Uh, I think there was a request for the uh, nugget as well. Let's just do, let me do this one by one here in order. So a lot of people, maybe we must not be near the low then, if everybody wants to know what's going on inside of uh, gold. Now let's take a look. Here's the week Weekly chart. Actually, let's look at it. Let's do it. You know, let's let's do the analysis, both the weekly and daily, out here. So, if we take a look at AEM, let's see what it is that we know. If we take a look, on, let me get my cursor out here. That'll make things a whole lot easier for me to uh, look at the uh, chart with you. That takes just a, a second. Let me turn that thing into a visible cursor. Always visible. There we go. Okay. So, if we take a look at AEM, here's what we know. The key level inside AEM, I'd say, is at April 21st, Ignico Eagle. If we take a look at April 21st swing point out there, a little hammer. Candle. That's a beauty. 16 million shares there. We're, uh, this is a weekly chart. Now we're in Thursday, and so far you've seen 6 million shares for the week. So Agnico Eagle is pushing down into a swing point with light volume. Unfortunately, or in the week's not over, but 2906 is the real key number here, 2808. If you close inside a swing point and you do it with light volume out there, that says, hey, you can go test the lows. Well, inside AEM, that would be a price point of uh, 2658. You're at 2808 right now. That's what the weekly. So the weekly pushing lows with light volume are also below the market profile support level. That's at 2898. You'd like to see it reject this swing point, get above the swing point for, for sure. At that 2906 level, that would get you back above the market profile as well. That's what's going on on AEM on the weekly. If we take a look at the uh, daily time frame out here, the daily time frame for AEM, well, this shows us, uh, number one, it's moving. it's been moving lower with less relative weakness out there. That's always a beautiful sign. You're going to see this actually across the board inside each of the, uh, well, not I can't say each, but you're going to see this across the board. Well, how can I say across the board? You're going to see this on most of the board when we take a look at the gold miners that are pushing into their swing point lows. They're doing it with less relative strength. Now, that alone is not a reversal signal. It's a pattern to be paying attention to. You want to watch for the uh, candle signal out here. If we take a look at its last swing point on the uh, daily charts, looks like that's October 7, 2.3 million shares there. And yesterday you were pushing into it with 2.6. Now, it did not actually test the low. 2793. It got down to, a, oh, I take that back. It did test at 2783. What does that say? It says you ought to at least test that low out there. So, a test of that, moving beyond it, getting past that, what, 2906, that would be what you would be looking for if you were inside of AEM. I hope that helps. Uh, who was that? That helps uh, GL in the uh, Tigers Den. A question to go take a look at the junior miners out here, JNUG. Let's go take a look at the uh, junior miners out here, direction share. Now, let's uh, see. We, we can do what we what this shows us here with regard to yesterday pushing lower with volume. I don't see a recent swing point out there. Let's go take a look at the A to B equals CD pattern. Then let's go take a look at use our swing our A point as the high on March the 14th. Our B point's going to be down here on April 28th. Our C point's going to be this high on July the 10th. Hey, how about that? Looks like it pretty much hit a one to one A to B equals CD. That price projection would be twenty six dollars and eighteen cents. What did we get down to yesterday? Again, this is a daily chart. You got down to six. 46. So what do we know about the junior miners out here? Well, they're just about completing an A to B equal C to the downside. What does that mean? You were pushing with volume. It wasn't a wide-ranging bar, so not a big deal down there. We take a look at completing that D point. If this area here holds, you'd like to see some kind of reversal. What would be the reversal today? And we'll know until the candle starts the session out here, and we'll just have to come back and take a look at it. But ideally, it'll be a close above yesterday's high, or at least the body of the candle, 782. The high was actually 838 out there. Uh, let me pull this back. So that's what's going on on the uh, daily. This thing maybe has not traded that long. It's only back to October of 2013 out here. So that's probably the best information. No reason to go to a weekly chart out here, in my opinion. Uh, that's the pattern inside the uh, junior nugget out there. That's for Jimmy D in the uh, Tiger's Den. He also wanted to take a look at the NUGT. So let's go back and take a look at that for him as well. If we take a look at the uh, daily chart, what we're going to see, if we take a look at just simply expand 
expansions of swing points. That means coming from the uh, May 28th, May 29th low out here to the high that was put in on July 10th. We're going to see that the uh, nugget has made the, it's got below the 1.272 expansion. That was priced out at uh, 1986. That's always a problem out there uh, because when you get below a level of support, it means you can go to the next level. So inside the NUGT, unless we see some kind of reversal here uh, this morning, uh, then what you're looking at is a potential move down to uh, 1073 out there. And that is what the uh, nugget is uh, giving us as a message. It was pushing lower with volume yesterday. You know, I don't know that it was really pushing with the type of volume that makes it an exhaustive uh, push lower. Uh, we do know that the uh, low from that key reversal session on October 8th out there, that that has been surpassed. That low was 1888. So at this stage here, until we see a, a reversal, you're a Assumption should be that the NUGT could want to trade down to about the 1073 level out there. What else? There was a couple other. Oh, we got that GGX and the ANV. Okay. So if we take a look at the ANV out here, Allied Nevada, uh, take a look at its daily chart. I think we're about to uh, go ahead and uh, complete the entire list for all of our dinners out there. Pushing lows with volume uh, yesterday. Down trade. It closed out at buck sixty-five. Um, man, I can tell you that. Uh, forget about I'm not going to look at the A to B. Well, let me just look at the weekly chart. Let's go see. What they're saying, we have to go to the monthly chart as well on Allied Nevada. Now nah, it doesn't look like we're going to, well, let's see. Oh, man. So this thing is below about everything. Uh, let's, uh, this is trading all the way, this son of a gun. Let's go put, this is trading all the way back below. It's October 20, 2008. So if you're looking for a weak miner, I would have to say Allied Nevada would be the place, that would be the sandbox that you want to go ahead and play in here. So this looks basically uh, horrible. This looks like... Um, Let's go see if it's uh, what it's doing here on the uh, monthly time frame. So the monthly swing point, October 1st, 2008 out there. And no volume. We didn't really trade that much, so let's not uh, pay too much attention there. But the low is a buck 56. You're at a buck 65 right now. Uh, you did hit the uh, buck uh, 63. I, I don't know where Allied Nevada. You know, there's there's really nothing to really reference here on the left hand side of the chart for Allied Nevada. And you'd hate for me to actually show you the A to B equals CD to the downside. It would actually suggest that these guys are going out of business. Uh, and I'm not saying that's what they're doing. I'm just saying the A to B equals CD point is going to take it both you know to negative or something along those lines. So that's that's the best that I can tell you inside Allied Nevada. If you are trade, if you're inside Allied Nevada, make sure you have a stop in place. If you're thinking of trading Allied Nevada, go find a better stock out there. There's got to be something better that is not below the lows all the way back to uh, 2008 out there. And then there was the uh, GDX was the uh, question. So if we take a look at the uh, GDX, the gold mine, this is really going to be the same pattern setup that we took a look at inside NUGT. But just to look at the expansion of uh, swing points out here, you'll see that it is too below the 1.272 expansion. I would say that unless we see some kind of reversal inside the GDX today, 1831 is likely the uh, target out there. And uh, if it complete, and then the question was back to uh, back to uh, the junior nuggets. Now, inside the junior nuggets, the J N U G. The question was, will it set up a, a butterfly pattern out there? And the answer is. Uh the answer to that question would be dependent upon this expansion of swing points out here. And that swing point going from the December 2013 time frame all the way up to our eight point. And the answer is, yeah, it would. It would really uh, it should get down to about the $4.55 mark, though, in order to really fulfill that 1.272 butterfly pattern. This is Steve Rhodes. This is TFN. We'll be right back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price 
price target and stock price of each stock in option trade. With market insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow off 14. Dow futures off 14. S&P down about uh, three and a half. So the big, uh, the big moves in the market yesterday uh, with regard to the uh, interpretation of the FOMC min uh, minutes were really uh, that, that stuck. Were the U.S. dollar index, meaning the euro, the pound, the yen, the Canadian dollar, not so much the Swiss corona, the Swedish franc out there, gold and silver. That's why uh, so many folks inside the Tiger's Den were trying to understand, hey, what's going on with some of the mining equities and so forth. And we'll take specifically a look at uh, gold and silver during the, uh, not during this break here, but during the uh, next uh, segment. What, right now what I want to do is go take a look at some of those things that really were moving as well. So let's go take a look at the, I mean, the currency marketplace. So futures market, we want to take a look at that as well. But uh, let's go take a look at the currencies first. Let's take a look at the euro. Now, I've got a two-hour chart on my uh, screen here for the euro. If you're following along with us on that. Uh, Tiger TV or watching us through the eSignal version 12 platform out there. What we can see here, and I did a, a workshop last night, the A to B equals CD pattern. If we take a look at the euro, just simply on a 120-minute time frame out here, our A point's going to be up here at the, uh, let me just do this one thing here, just uh, because I am on the uh, currency pairs. 
give me just uh, uno momento to uh, put out a, a couple more decimal points out here. Let me put that at five. That would be good. Okay. So if we take a look at the uh, euro, the eight points out here at the, this is the futures contract they were looking at, that 1.2845, that is your A point. Your B point is down here at about, uh, about uh, what, uh, between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. on uh, October the 23rd. That's at a price point of 1.2617. Your C point's a retracement of 0.618. It actually was about a 70% retracement. That took us in between uh, 10 a.m. and noon here yesterday. And uh, so your 1 to 1A to B equals CD. The price projection on that is 1.25. Four seven to get really down to the nano tick, uh, pip. And if we take a look at uh, what did the uh, currency market get down to? This is almost hard to believe, isn't it? You almost think this was a setup. One point, one point two five, one point two five four eight. You gotta, you gotta love that. So it's completed. It's one to one a to b equals c. Now on its way down there. It formed a hammer candle here between 4 and 6 o'clock this morning out here. So that hammer candle was really tested during this session here. That does not complete until 10 a.m. So there's still another 34 minutes for this session out here. It also happens to be a key reversal session out there. So what this tells us on the two-hour chart, uh, and you got to be a little bit concerned because uh, this has been a pretty real strong movement off of that uh, C leg. Now, of course, the real strength came here as the uh, market responded to uh, the FOMC minutes out here. But then we can see after that initial thrust, it really just kind of lost its uh, way and just simply went ahead and completed its pattern. So this is suggesting, as we speak right now, we'll know more in 33 minutes. We'll know more in 33 minutes. If we see just simply a one little tick up, as long as this uh, candle here remains green, you'd have a key reversal session as well as the hammer out here. And that would say, okay, that the move higher inside the U.S. dollar index because this is like, what, 57 percent, something along those lines? of the uh, U.S. dollar index that they, that a bottom uh, could be in for the euro out there. That's what's going on inside that currency pair. We, will, we won't take a look at the other currency pairs right now. Let's go take a look at the futures market and figure out what's going on out there. Now, let's take a look at, um, let's go take a look at the strength. Let's take a look at the strength. Strength would be the NASDAQ. Let's look at a 30-minute chart out here. Now, in a 30-minute chart here for the NASDAQ, as we were coming into the uh, 8 a.m. time session out here on a 30-minute basis, formed a hammer candle. In fact, it's a uh, it formed a hammer candle right back here at 2.30 yesterday afternoon. Now, the candlestick on its own is not necessarily, uh, does not necessarily merit uh, a, um, a uh, uh, you know, you don't trade off of those. But what it was doing as it was forming that, it actually was completing A to B equals CD down pattern. This, again, is on a 30-minute chart out here. So you can see it made the 1 to 1.272 as it made that hammer candle here yesterday at 2.30 in the afternoon. Then we just saw a market that just simply moved sideways out here. So the second A to B equals CD inside of the uh, inside of the 30-minute chart for the NQ. We'll go start out here at the uh, 10 a.m. session. So yesterday at 10 a.m. says that's our A point. Our B point's going to be right down here at the uh, bottom of the hammer. And the uh, C point looks like we'll just go right up here. We'll use that little doji candle. So what we can see here on the 30-minute chart, what the uh, NASDAQ did here was it completed a second A to B equals CD to the downside. If we take a look at that, you can see it did it with a hammer candle. It completed that pattern just as it should. You got some confirmation on the uh, next candle. This strong, very strong, very strong like bull market, you know, completed its pattern. We'll see now what the NASDAQ on a 30-minute chart needs to do is get above 4,067.60. If it can do that, it has not done that off of these highs out here. So that has been our area of resistance. So let's say thank you, John Logan, for putting together these TAS market profiles for us. 4,067.60, that's the number for us to be watching. From the king of beers, the NASDAQ 30-minute chart. We'll be right back, folks. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization 
option capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technamental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now's the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balance. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call one 855 75 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. EverBank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar. Because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. To the races. We got the Dow up 48 points, trade out of 17,022. S and P up five at 1977. Composite up 14 points, up 14 points. My apology. The S and P is down five points, trade out of 1977. The composite is off about 14 points, straight at 4535. Russell down four and a half. She's trained out 1144. Dax down 70. Footsie down 29. Gold off 20 bucks. Silver down 63 cents. Platinum off four bucks this morning. And natural gas up about uh, almost three pennies out there. Lead the charge, the upside, Visa. Now, the reason that the Dow is up is because Visa is the numero uno waiting inside. I believe it's the number one waiting inside of the uh, Dow. So that is uh, pulling things higher for sure. Visa was out with the uh, numbers after the bell last night. Right now it's up about. Uh, almost $19 out here. They topped estimates. Uh, they generated net income of $1.4 billion. you got to love that. About $2.18 uh, per share. Um, 
where it, I don't see what it was going against out there. Nonetheless, uh, moving higher, uh, probably with conviction as well, already 1.4 million shares. So we'll take a look at the Visa. Harman International Industries, that's up about 8 bucks, up uh, about 8% out here. Baidu up 3%, up 685. Air Products Chemicals, APD is a ticker symbol. You may have seen their trucks driving around. Uh, they're up about 4.5%, up six, uh, about 6 bucks. Uh, Grand Canyon Education, Lope is the uh, ticker symbol. That's up 14% of 6 bucks. MasterCard up 6% of 480. Uh the Hazmat company Lakeland uh Industries up 35% up 4 bucks. I haven't heard of another case of Ebola, have you? Huh. And any event out there, Catamaran, haven't seen that uh, stock uh, for a long time on my uh, screen. That's up 8%. CTRX, uh, that's up about uh, 3 bucks and change. So the downside out here, up 10% this morning, uh, Pakira Pharmaceuticals. You may have butchered that name a bit. PCRX, but it's getting butchered right now, down about $11. Uh, Perexel International, PRXL, off 12%, down 8 bucks. Chart Industries, off 11%, down 5 bucks. Zillow, uh, Z is off. we got to go take a look at Zillow at one stage. I think that's in a consolidation, but we'll go find out whether it is or it isn't. That's off 5 bucks. Uh, you've got uh, Borg Warner, off a couple of bucks this morning. Weight Watchers, losing a bit of weight this morning. In fact, 9% in one, one um, just a few minutes out there. Now, that's a good weight loss program, but it's not the kind that shareholders want to see out here. Uh, weight Watchers, WTW, down two and a half bucks. Look at that uh, Dow go. Let's go take a look at Visa. It's going to uh, power things higher. It says, hey, the heck with IBM. Adios, amigos, out here. We take a look. Man, that's a, well, that's a 240 minute chart out here. Let's go take a look at the daily time frame for uh, Visa. Hey, it was still a strong, still a strong looking candle. We take a look at the uh, daily chart. Gapping up this morning and taking that and getting all the way back to uh, what may be its all-time high. Yeah, it's all-time high out here. That took uh, place on the trading session of January 21st out there. Now, that high is a uh, 235.50. Uh, you've gotten up there. That has volume out there of 4.9 million shares. You've done 1.6. So it's taking on a swing point with volume out here. It's really been consolidating since that time period. So getting above that would be extremely bullish and extremely bullish for the Dow if the number one uh, weighting structure, I believe Visa is number one in there. Maybe somebody in the den can confirm that uh, for me. But let's take a look at a uh, weekly time frame, see what uh, Visa may be doing here on a, a weekly basis. If we take a look at uh, Visa, that swing point, boy, it's a heck of a large A to B equals CD to the upside out here. Uh, the uh, weekly swing has a volume of $14 million. You've done 9.9. .9. So, yeah, it could take out that swing point with volume. If it does, the small A to B equals CD setup on this. So that's pretty powerful, pretty powerful message, uh, considering we've got our uh, Santa Claus rally hat on inside of the uh, market out here. Uh, the swing low, sweet chariot. Let's just use this uh, candle out here from... Uh, last week 10 13 so visa if it takes out the uh, weekly swing point the daily swing point it really says it should head to 259.70 i would say more likely you'd be looking at 277.24 out there that's what's going on inside your ticker symbol v hey as long as we're at v let's go take a look at z out here let's go take a look at zillow off four percent down 450 that's a weekly chart that first pops up on our screen out here what do we know about zillow hey right now it's trading below a market profile a support level, so that's not uh, good. Uh, that always says that your next uh, target could be a, a swing point out here. That would take you back into December 2013. Um, that's right around the prices of seventy dollars to seventy-seven bucks. But let's go look at the uh, daily chart out here. I thought this thing had a uh, fairly decent breakout. That could be wrong. Maybe a different stock chart that I was thinking of. So it's completed the one to one point two seven two. Gapping down says, "Hey, it wants to do the one point one point six one eight A to B equals C D to the downside." That would take you into about ninety three eighty five out here. Yeah, it must have been a different stock that I was uh, looking at out here. What Zillow does have, yeah, it's got a high volume high. You got to be looking for the bottom inside Zillow. They don't have to. But uh, now Zillow, are they trading lower? I think Google might have come out with some news that they're going to compete against companies like Zillow. Maybe maybe it was something. That was just something that flashed across my screen out there, and I didn't read the story. So I don't want to pump out bad information. Nonetheless, 
you know, comp competition can be good. So Zillow does have an untested high volume high. The week ended July, tw uh, the, the day ended, <laughs> the day, the trading session of July 28th out there, 8.7 million shares. It's up at about the 164.90 out there. It does not look like today is going to be turnaround Thursday for Zillow out here. Okay, <clears throat> let me go back to uh, gold because the question was, hey, what was gold and what was silver doing out here for uh, folks inside the uh, Tiger's Den? So let's go take a look at gold specifically. Let's take a look at the uh, daily chart. Let's uh, pull this back for folks. Now, what gold has done, if we come off of the uh, low out here from October the uh, 6th, and I do believe that's a significant low, this is what gold is telling us. We go from that low, which is at 1183.30, all the way up to the high that was put in here on October the uh, 21st. That's out at 1256.10. If we go from the low to the high, the 0.786 retracement inside of gold is 1198.90. The actual interest session low that we've hit so far is 1199.30. 1199.30 versus 1198.90. That's a pretty darn good, uh, pretty close for me in, uh, in uh, my work out here. Now, if that's the end of the retracement inside of gold, setting up the uh, C point of an A to B equals CD to the upside, what we will see is we will see gold close above, and I'm talking today, we will see gold close above the October 6th high. That's a 1209.90. So there doesn't, you know, it's a 1203. That's six bucks. That's not a big deal. So if the uh, bulls are back in town and we're going to see an A to B equals CD to the upside, we will see gold close back above 1209.90 out there. Now, volume on that trading session from October the 6th is. Um, where the heck did the volume bar go? There you go, 186,000 contracts. You've done 131 today. So if you can do less than 186, uh, you get back above that uh, swing point high. You'd have a rejection of the 0.786 level. You'd have a rejection of a swing point, preferably with lighter volume. That would set up the uh, C point of the A to B equals C D. If gold closes inside 1209.90 it says going down and testing the lows is a real possibility that's at 1183.30 that's what's going on inside our world of goldilocks and the three little bears out there if we go take a look at the silver silver is uh needs uh, needs to go to the doctor it is not as healthy as uh, gold is out here silver now trading below its october 3rd swing point uh, if we take a look at the uh the bullish candle that took place here on october 6 but the actual low 1666, 1664 it is going to be october 3rd that's going to be the winner out there now that had volume of 40 Thousand about forty-one thousand contracts here, thirty-two thousand right now. So silver is now what silver is doing continues this in essence today. It's made a lower low and it's done it with less relative weakness out there. Now again, that alone is not bullish. It does tell us that the move lower is potentially not real. Of course, somebody can say, "What do you mean not real? It's moving lower." What cannot be real about that? What it means is that it really doesn't have the strength to keep on uh, motoring down. Or what we're going to see is if you take a rubber band. In fact, take a rubber band. Pull it back as far as you can, and then uh, maybe just try to snap it on your skin. That's probably what's going to happen inside. It's going to sting. So that's probably what's going to happen inside of silver as well as soon as we see that uh, snap back out here. And that's what moving lower with less relative uh, weakness will do for something. Now, that doesn't mean that things can't pick up and, and all holy heck can break loose. But really, all holy heck was yesterday when the FOMC minutes came out. If we take a look at A to B equals CD down patterns inside of uh, silver out here, we'd start off off at the uh, swing point out here on or I would at least on the uh, February 24th swing point as my A my B point would be down here on May the uh, 30th and my C point all the way up here on July the 10th. It's done more than a 1 to 1.272 now that says that silver, pay hey, silver, high ho silver, might be targeting 1594 before it stops its uh, descent out there. Uh, that's what silver is. Now, silver maybe is going to take its cue from gold. I don't think it's going to be the other way around. Of course, both of them need to take their cue from the U.S. dollar index. And that means that everything's got to take its cue from the euro, the pound, the Japanese yen out there. So that is what's going on inside of it. So the uh, Dow, talk about how strong the uh, Dow is. If we go take a look at the uh, Dow futures just as, a, as an example out here. I got this hammer candle. Is when we were talking about hammer candles. Well, yesterday at uh, two thirty uh, is when the uh, Dow made a fourth uh, move down. I uh, made a fourth move up. <laughs> if we take a look at uh, wave counts out here. I did that at ten o'clock yesterday morning. Then yesterday at uh, three fifteen, three fifteen at three thirty makes four 
uh, wave counts on the way down, forms a hammer candle, runs into support of its TAS market uh, profile. This morning came down and really tested the hammer. Didn't get all the way down to the low. Got pretty close with that hammer candle. It a lot of bulls inside of this uh, China shop out here. Looks like they are crashing the party of the uh, bears. Uh, now, uh, the uh, Dow on the 30-minute chart uh, you know, looks uh, P. D, pretty, PDB, pretty darn uh, bullish at the uh, moment out there. Of course, uh, we really should take a look and see what else is going on inside of the Dow. So let me do that. Let me, do I have that on this page? Yeah, let me open up my Dow page. Let's take a look at our Dow 30 stocks out here and uh, see what do we have moving to the upside. So let me just uh, see. Uh, it looks like oh, only a handful really moving the upside. So it is Visa powering the uh, market. You've got Visa, American Express, Goldman Sachs, so that's strong. Better take a look at Goldman Sachs. That's up uh, 55 cents right now. Coke is up nine cents. Home Depot's up eight pennies. Pfizer up a nickel, but that's it. Otherwise, everything else is mean and green. Uh, biggest loser in the uh, Dow is uh, Chevron, uh, CBX. So we ought to take a look at that. In fact, let's. How come I don't have? Uh, I don't have a, a charting tool on here. That's that's pretty silly. Well, we're just simply going to have to add that in. So I don't have to uh, trade, I don't have to switch uh, places out here. So give me a moment while I just beautify this uh, chart out here. Let me uh, set up a uh, style. Let's just set it up to the number one radio button out there. That'll put some nice tools. Okay, so we got that. Let me just kind of situate it here with inside of uh, eSignal. It just makes it easier. Okay, so let's go click on Let's take a look at weakness. Let's go take a look at uh, Chevron out here. Um, represents about 4.5% of the weighting structure inside of the uh, Dow. Let's go see what it is doing. Man, not a big deal. So what we know about Chevron is this. Number one, it made a 1 to 2 A to B equals CD to the downside. Does that on October the 15th. Makes a, a little bit of a hammer candle out there. Gets some follow through the very next day. Uh, right now, it uh, yesterday in the day before, uh, it had gotten above a uh, market profile resistance level. Right now, today, it is trading just slightly below that. Uh, what uh, Chevron could uh, do is uh, do itself well would be to close above that market profile high. That's 116.31. So that's a level that is being uh, tested out here. If I take a look at Chevron, and let's take a look at uh, a, a trend line out here. Let's go take a look at the trend line off of the high from July 24th. If uh, Chevron can break through this uh, trend line out here, and let's see, it may have a confirmed beta B equal CD to the upside. Let's take a look at this here. Because our A point was all the way down here at that uh, little hammer candle on October 15th. That's such a little hammer candle, but it certainly was a hammer. That's your A point. Your B point out here is going to be October 23rd, 7 million shares, and you got above it yesterday 6.8 7.2 the day before you know that swing point is under attack with volume out there so it looks like chevron is actually trying to set up an a to b equals cd to the upside we all know how 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 hit the energy sector was in chevron the xle the DIG, the DUG out here. It looks like Chevron is actually trying to uh, form an A to B equals C to the upside. That ought to take price into the 124.13 level. I'd have to say more like 127.03. Now, it's going to run into resistance of that uh, descending trend line out there. So if it can break through that, then you can say you've got a change in trend underway inside of CVX chevron if we take a look at uh so jim was asking what's pushing the dow jones up it is just simply uh, visa uh, visa is the number one waiting inside of the uh, dow now this is maybe as of about uh, two weeks ago but it, let's say as of two weeks ago it was 8.7 percent of the uh, waiting inside of the dow number one waiting was um uh, is Visa, IBM number two. IBM's just uh, flat today, down 12 pennies. No big deal out there. Goldman Sachs is number three, up 7% out here. So let's go take a look at uh, Goldman Sachs, see what it's doing on its uh, in its uh, stock chart out here. Uh, so we take a look at uh, Goldman Sachs. It's pushing into a, a swing point high. That was from its closing the gap out here. That gap, uh, let's see what that gap looked like here. That gap had gapped down with only 2.9 million shares. Not a big deal. It was pushing into that gap with 3 million shares. It was doing that on on October 28th. Yesterday, a little doji candle at a resistance level, nonetheless. Hey, when we get back to this break, let's go take a look at the Goldman Sachs out here. Sometimes people call it government Sachs. I will be right back. This is Steve Rhodes. This is TF.
take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the funds should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy. A set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, Unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Steve Rhodes as he teaches techniques on technical analysis using pattern recognition, celestial charting, Fibonacci, and other tools. The Trader's Edge, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 95, being powered uh, primarily, not entirely, but primarily by uh, by uh, Visa and uh, Goldman Sachs. Before we went to that break, we were starting to take a look at uh, Goldman Sachs. GS is the uh, ticker symbol out here. And what we know about Goldman Sachs, is number one, it, it did gap down, so it's trading into a resistance level. Now, that doji that took place yesterday, it's important at resistance, not so much at uh, support, uh, uh, not you know, as, as markets move lower. Dojis mean a ton as the markets move higher. I believe that has more to do with... Uh, uh, 
the emotions of fear and greed out here. It's a signal that the market is tired. So it happened, happening right at the uh, gap down, which took place on October 7th. There wasn't a huge gap down, but nonetheless, it was a, a gap down that sets up your resistance level. Resistance being 187.15. Now, 187.15 with that doji was hit with 3.3 million shares. A swing only has 1.9 million shares. Doji or not. It was just resting because it was taking on that swing point with volume. Today, you've got a pretty decent volume, 25 minutes of trading, 325,000 shares. If I do just simply the simple math, it says we're going to do volume similar to yesterday. So it's pushing into that swing point. Uh, what Goldman Sachs wants to do is go test that high. That high is 189.50. I say what Goldman Sachs really wants to do is go take out that high and set up an A to B equals CD in the uh, marketplace out here, just like the Dow is going to do, the S&P is going to do. The NDX is going to do, and maybe even the Russell 2000 takes up into a 1350 over the course of the next year out here. But right now, we're just focused on hey, between now and the end of this year out here. And what I suspect is we're going to see the markets continue to kind of move higher, maybe just gradually here between now and uh, Monday, maybe Tuesday. We have the election. We get the election results. The markets aren't really sure what to do. So they probably just trade sideways for a couple of days out here. This is just trying to set up the what I consider to be the realistic expectation. Because whatever happens from the election, the market's going to have to figure out what in the heck does even that mean out there? You know, and then once it figures it out, then it'll say, hey, look, Santa Claus arrived. He came in on October the 15th, October the 16th, and uh, simply set up the Santa Claus rally that takes us into highs throughout the end of the year. So this is all a matter of really trying to figure out where it is that you can either take new positions, add to positions from the long side in the uh, marketplace. And until we see any other piece of information, that, in my opinion, is the uh, message. Now, you know, the Dow is uh, arguably, you know, being pulled up by a couple stocks. That's what the issue is when you deal with weighted structures out there but we can always go take a look at weighted versus unweighted structures out there and we can look at a wider swath of the market we can take a look at the S&P 500 and the S&P 500 this also gave you an indication that the uh, bottom was in here I uh, pull this back just a tad here that the bottom was in back on October 15th because the weighted structure was moving down but you see all of the Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall Humpty Dumpty had a great fall that was the market but all the king's horses and all the king's men and that's what was happening inside the S&P 500. They were putting Humpty back together again. And that's what happens when you have a rising bottom inside of the equal weighted structure inside the S&P 500. So anybody out there that's telling you that it's only the big, heavily weighted uh, uh, the weighted uh, uh, stocks that are pulling the markets higher, they're smoking something out there. And it's not anything that you want to get to uh, be smoking because you'll get smoked too. And at this stage of the game, we don't see a divergence right now inside of the S&P equal weighted versus the non-equal way to the spy out there. So, uh, you know, everything truly is in place. The question is going to be, what kind of retracement? Where is it going to come from? I don't know the answer to that. And even if it's going to be very large out there. Hey, folks, thanks so much for joining me. It is Thursday. Have a great Thursday. Hopefully I'll see you during the next hour of the Trader's Edge. Take care, folks. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today.
You're watching Tiger TV.